Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> This is Brian for Midlife Prices. Uh, what we're looking at here is our new shed location. Uh, what was our old shed location, we just had a, a 10 by 12 metal arrow shed that I just built a base for on skids. Um, it's actually been moved now up around the corner up there uh, because I liked this site to build a bigger shed. Um, we're gonna build this one ourselves out of wood. Um, we're gonna do pretty much the same skid foundation but a few differences because it's a little bit bigger and I'd like it to last a little bit longer, hopefully. So we're gonna do our best. So I'll try and walk you through this in a few steps. I won't take you through, make you watch all the gory details. It's not real exciting stuff. So for example, uh, what I've been doing here so far is generally leveling the ground. It doesn't have to be perfectly level because the skids are gonna rest on these three gravel trenches right here. So that's to help drainage and to give me a little better spot to, to uh, make a level spot to set the skids on and the skids will come in contact with that gravel but the water won't sit there so they are treated skids but there's the skids over there actually so uh this is going to be a 12 by 24 shed uh 24 feet long that direction and the skids are going to run that whole 24 feet there will be three of them uh they're actually made of two 12 foot pieces um and i'm going to kind of splice those together using some treated two by fours, just as little uh, braces in the middle there where they connect. So I'm gonna lay out three 24 foot pieces here in these trenches, and I'm actually gonna connect them with some cross braces that are also four by fours um, that I've cut to fit in between at uh, three locations along that length there. So two sets of them. Um, but that's where we're at. I'm about to, I think I've done all the, I need to do one more maybe tamp of all this uh, gravel and dirt. Um, make sure it's level one last time. And then we're gonna lay the skids out there. I'm gonna connect them, uh, kind of make the two 12s into one 24 foot long stretch and also add the, the cross braces in between. The cross braces are gonna be connected by uh, joist hangers made for four by fours. So those are the next steps. So I'm gonna lay everything out here and start putting it together and we'll take another look in a minute okay so here we are with everything connected that's my 24 foot long by well it's for a 12 foot base but the base will hang off the sides a little bit um, skid foundation the idea is that this could all be dragged in the future not that i want to but if anything should go horribly wrong in theory this could be this could be dragged um, after the fact uh, you can see my gravel trenches. I forgot to mention in the last clip that uh, in a perfect world, that would have been something like uh, pea gravel. It would have been much smaller than what I'm using, but it just so happened that I had some of this gravel that I had used for walkways. It's an inch inch gravel. It's, it's too big for this job, but it'll do the job, I think. Um, you can see I took, so I actually not, or notched, but cut the corners. I don't know if you can see it here. Um, I cut the corners on the skids to, to help it slide better in the future. I did all those and everywhere I made a cut, I, uh, I treated it after the fact because this is treated wood. Um, the cross beams are also four by fours, but I actually ripped about a half an inch off of those off of this top. I actually cut it a half inch so that'll give me a little clearance on the ground if I ever should try to drag it in the future so that it doesn't just drag the ground along with it, the dirt along with it. You can see I use joist hangers to hang the uh, cross members. So those are four by four joist hangers. So that's the whole thing. Again, everywhere I made a cut, I treated. Um, it is 24 feet long. It's less than 12 feet wide, but I, like I said, the base will hang over slightly. That's okay. Um, so that's it. Um, I believe we're now, it's all level, or at least as level as it can be. Some of, the, some of the wood is even a little bowed, so I mean, it gives here and there, but with the weight of the shed on top of it, it should push it all down level. Um, I got everything as level as I could. It's all kind of in the bubble. Sometimes it was on the edge of the line of the bubble of the level, but it was close enough, I think. Um, so next step is to uh, start laying out joists on top of this. I also forgot to give a shot here of how I connected a 12 foot four by four and a 12 foot four by four to make a 24 foot four by four. 
this is what I've done. So treated two by fours, cut into four foot lengths and just kind of put across that seam there and screwed in a bunch of times. So that's my, at the middle, that's my connection. So these middle cross beams are slightly, they're three inches shorter than those cross beams because they have that extra two by four there and there. So, but that's my connection point to make one long skid out of two skids. So back again with the uh, skids in place, as I showed before. But now you can see we've done half of the joist system on top of the skids. The reason it's half is because this length being 24 feet across the skids, this would be the long side of the shed. Um, uh, it's 12 feet the other way, and that's what the joists are. Um, but it wasn't, didn't really make sense, or it's not really, I don't think, practical to span this whole edge with one board, one two by eight. So I've done one 12 foot two by eight and I'm gonna do another. So what we chose to do, um, right or wrong, this is what I've chose to do is essentially make two 12 foot square boxes and connect them in the middle. So I hope that's all right. Um, basically it just means a double joist in the middle um, I couldn't think of any other way really to span this 24 feet uh, because there was going to be a break. So it seemed the best way to do it is to double the joist in the middle and just kind of connect two boxes side by side. So that's what we're going to do. So we're half done. We've got joist hangers and all on here. Um, so well, I don't want to go upside down, so I'll come over here. There's a joist hanger right there. So pretty standard, I think. Uh, I've learned a little bit about putting in joist hangers. Uh, some of you out there might know this, or maybe you've got a better way, but what we found is um, it's hard to, you know, put it in place, especially for one person, but even sometimes for two, but especially if you're trying to do this by yourself. Um, it was really tough to, to place that joist hanger, let's say, to hold that joist hanger there, hold the board in position so that it's level with the, with the, they call this either a, oh gosh, a band joist or a rim joist, this edge one. Um, so to keep it level, hold it, hold that uh, uh, joist hanger in place. They have these little tabs that you can tap into the wood that are supposed to hold them temporarily. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work too great. Um, but especially what we noticed is when you go to, to, nail, to nail in the, uh, the diagonal, kind of the, the ones that go in an angle, in, in this case, there are four. These are two by eights and two by eight joist hangers. So there's four nails that go in at a diagonal, two on each side. What we found was when you, when you nailed those in, um, it would tend to pull away. The joist itself would separate from the rim joist. Uh, it didn't want to stay up tight, no matter how. I mean, you could pull it up against it. You could lean on it on this other side, but when you nailed in, the two would separate. I think just the action of nailing uh, made it separate. So my friend Taylor had an excellent idea, which uh, we did. So we started out in the beginning and we kind of did a few not so great, but then we realized what was happening and we made a fix. And that fix was to put one screw uh, on the outside of the joist just to hold it in position. So that then allows you, that frees up your hands to do several other things when you're holding the, the joist hanger in place and everything. And it also kind of squeezes the band joist, the rim joist, and this floor joist together and resists them pulling apart when you do that nail at an angle. So we started out with a, you know, we were getting a little bit of a gap. And then as we learned that and we started putting those screws in, we got them, of course, much tighter. So there's a much tighter one. So that's just a little tip for anybody trying to do this yourself or even, even with two people, I found that that was happening a lot. So I don't know if that's something that kind of the pros do or not, but it's something that we kind of learned and it seemed to work pretty well. So, so I'm gonna continue doing that. Uh, this, this box, by the way, is attached to the skids um, with some toe screws. Um, kind of gone in at an angle to the skids. Um, it's positioned right where I want it. It hangs off the, an equal amount on both sides. It is square. Um, the diagonal measurements are equal. Um, and it is a 12 by 12 box. So my next step is to just make another one right alongside it. And that'll be my joist system. And then it'll be time to lay plywood on top. 
Okay, so here we are with the full joist system complete. That's 12 feet by 24 feet. That's the whole size of the floor of the shed. Uh, you can see I've got all the joists in, joist hangers. As I described before, it's two 12 foot boxes actually joined in the center. Um, I've got all the blocking going this way so that every piece of plywood, the plywood's gonna lay this way. Every piece of plywood will be supported on every edge. It'll fall on a joist or a piece of blocking. So that should be it. I think it's pretty sturdy. It's square, it's level. And now it's just time for plywood. And once the plywood's on, then we've got a, a dance floor as they call it. And we can start with the walls. Let's get to the plywood. Okay, so here we are with all the plywood in place. I just need to screw it all down. What I've done is I've screwed down the corners and I wanted to show this part because it's a neat little trick that I saw on a YouTube video and I thought it was pretty much the coolest thing in the world. So it turns out these are all, these are screws and they've all been nailed into place just to start them. So every screw that I need to screw in is nailed on there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but they're, they're all set up, all ready to go. I've only screwed in the corners. Um, so this way, I, on the last shed I built, the last shed floor, you know, I pre-drilled every hole because I'm always worried that I'm gonna split the wood if I don't, don't pre-drill. So these screws are made not to have to be pre-drilled, but still when you hold them in place and you try and get them started and they wanna wobble around and everything, and it's kind of a pain, so. And you might have to measure in between or something like that, so. I just laid out the tape measure and pounded those all into place with, you know, two, two taps maybe. Um, so they're ready to go. So I thought it was a super cool trick. So I'm gonna show you how fast this goes in. And uh, there may be some of you out there saying, uh, it, like it literally blew my mind. Um, there may be some of you out there saying, but Brian, you're an idiot. Everybody knows that, or it's not that big of a deal. Well, uh, I say to those people, number one, that's kind of rude and I don't appreciate your tone. But number two, I didn't know. And it absolutely blew my mind. So let's screw these in. And voila, we have what is now commonly referred to as a dance floor. Now just walls and a roof. That's all she wrote. 